Shall I show Wale? Wow. <laughs> Brilliant woman. I have aunties that act like that. So. <laughs> Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of The Gist, where we discuss African cinema and Nollywood movies. My name is Ali. My name is Kyle And today's film is The Wedding Party 2, Destination Dubai. Destination Dubai brings us up to date with the newly married couple who are now expecting a baby. Is reformed bachelor Dozier ready for this? Felix and Obianju, Obianju are still working on their relationship, but has he given up small chops for good? Everyone's favorite character, Tintin, is up to her usual hilarious antics while being indulged by her husband, Bam Bam. Will crazy best man Shola succeed in getting close to the face the MC and does Nonso go all the way with Deirdre after the surprise kiss at the end of the last movie? And of course, there's another wedding. Who will it be this time? And why on earth are we in Dubai? <laughs> Let us discuss. Uh, we shall find out why we're in Dubai in a minute. Okay. <laughs> The, the, um, to, to kick this one off, I fell in love with is it Mrs. Cooker. Yes. Oh God, Shola, 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 Shola. She was awesome. She was yes. brilliant. Um, let me flip it. I, I like when a character is almost. I don't want to use the word type character, but kind of like you have a very strong perception of the character that is being played. But then the actor just flips it on you. And I think this lady did it here. Um, yeah. To start with, she was hilarious, the whole film. She eh, Sometimes when she just shows up, I just start having giggles because I, I know she's going to do something crazy. She was hilarious, constantly being the crazy one in the film. <laughs> she just made me laugh and really enjoy the film. But then she got to this scene that was quite touching and emotional and she just flipped it and went super serious, like almost drama level yeah. sadness. And I was yeah. like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. And yeah. I was mightily impressed with that. Really, really good performance. Brilliant. Um, I love the way they covered the traditional wedding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, when we marry, all the things we say that families are marrying and all those, you know, showcase those things, you not know, just gloss over them. And I like the way they treated them in this film. Um, the cinematography, the colors were rich, vibrant. Um, there's some parts that will come to in the negatives, but on the whole, uh, they were richly, but are mostly positive. I love the premise of the film. It wasn't anything to write home about. It wasn't anything fantastic, but it was a good premise that had enough legs to, to make a good film out of it. So I like that. The sound too was very good. I love the, the audio, the way they did the audio. Um, the music too was quite, um, nice. Uh, for me, I, I tend not to notice music that much, so I, I won't say it was exceptional, but the sound mix generally was quite balanced and good, and we didn't get any drop-off of audios that we've been getting in some of yeah. our Nigerian films. And yeah. lastly, they had some really gorgeous locations. Yeah. Um, come back to that again, I think some of it worked, didn't work in their favour, but on the whole, it was a very cinematic film from a pictorial point of view. Point so of yeah, view. it was yeah. really, really good. Yeah, um, I echo everything they said. And um, yes, Shola Shobowale. Wow. Oh, brilliant woman. <laughs> I have aunties that act like that. So <laughs> the authenticity is yes. Uh, um, I love the music. I, I think there, there are very, very few people that know how to score a film. And you know where the music actually plays into the drama and you know it just fits w within the con cultural context it, it was brilliant whoever scored the film did very well i really liked the music um there was a scene that where well, that was a delivery scene where someone was giving breath and um shalashi bowali was uh, you know <laughs> there again and you know you know those scenes whereby someone runs past a point w of where they're going and they have to backtrack and then go she you know that kind of sliding effect <laughs> like, and like <laughs> And come back and and then comes, she did it so perfectly for a woman of her age and stature. I, you know, went back and you know, got into that push. I was like, oh she my was, goodness, she was she brilliant. Was the whole film. Hilarious, was hilarious. Brilliant. So, yeah, I think those are the main points that are positives. Okay, so the ones that we don't like to talk about the negatives. Okay, <laughs> I'll start with cinematography. Yeah, yeah. Now, so I, I mentioned that the colors were quite rich and I love the way they brought out um, the some of the scenes were shot. They struggled a bit when they got to Dubai. Um, and what I mean by that, there were a few in interior shots that they had that I think the, you could tell they were so underexposed. Like underexposed means it was shot in such a way that there was not enough light to capture the picture. So it was very grainy. Some of the colors were washed out. Um, and I think this is the things I would have forgiven if you could tell it was a low budget film. But when you shoot a film and has a feel of a high budget, 
Um, a, a good example of that is Barry Barry It was one of my favorite films from last year, uh, but it was shot on the DSLR, I think, from the colors and the picture quality. It wasn't that great, but you forgave it because you kind of like, thought you were watching a low budget short film done by a, an up and coming director. But when you have a big budget and you've already established some really you know gorgeous, luscious um, scenes, and then you go to another one. If one or two or three, probably, probably that we're not up to that same quality, you can't like notice it a little bit more. It's a slightly more unforgivable in a way. Um, some em emotional progression. We still do this thing where someone just gets excitable from zero to hundred, as of something makes you annoyed, and you just jump from being mild to be very angry. Some of the reactions of the characters were not explainable. Like there was a time one of the moms got upset, and from the kind of character she is, that was not the way she would have expressed it because she's probably yeah. the more reserved controlled type she's not going to watch you know give you a telling a, a telling of in public like that i thought yeah. it wasn't true to her character and i think you know when you write something because it works that way rather than because the character would have done it that way it kind of like feels a bit false um and then i, I this one I, I i for me this was the biggest one so throughout the film we were all party i mean when i mean we we're all the audience we we're all party to a bit of knowledge or information that only one character was in the dark about so everybody kept on finding out that oh this has happened and that character did not find out because it was crucial to their decisions about something else so just bear with us okay now the only way to reveal that information to that character is for us to see because we already know so the only other thing we will benefit as the audience is how that person finds out and how they react when they find out and then for some reason, they chose not to show this on camera. So in other words, what I mean is, this person found out, but we didn't find out how they found out. So they mm. found out and then they came into this screen and then they were reacting. You're like, no, 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 you've cheated. We need to know how this person found out because, it, it, let's, let me flip it. Let's imagine we're watching a film where this man is cheating on his wife, right? And his wife is the best loving woman ever. She does everything for him. Imagine if we then don't show how she found out that her husband is cheating on her, and all we see is her reaction. It feels it leaves the audience with a feeling of wow, really? We need to find out how she discovers that her husband is cheating so that we see the emotional breakdown of how it affects her. That's what storytelling does. It's we are trying to empathize with people. So when she finds out that her husband is cheating off camera, we've been we've been robbed of that impact yeah. that it has on her yeah. and so we can't even judge her reaction to the level we would have judged it if we saw how like let's imagine she's told and she goes oh my husband's cheating okay then the reaction is like oh maybe she didn't love her husband after all and i think that was a big flaw on on part of the filmmaker so yeah that one i just thought was on for give it and then the last thing i, I picked up was that we, we still have characters unmotivated so when i mean unmotivated like the a character changes from their normal thing, but we don't know why they changed. You know, in film, you always have to explain, when I mean explain, show on screen why a character is changing from what they would normally have done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, we watched this film in the cinema. Yeah. Um, and um, by the way, thanks to Ebony Life, who invited us to the premiere of this film. Unfortunately, we weren't able to make it, but... If you have any other films, <laughs> <laughs> we would do our best <laughs> to be there. Unfortunately, our schedules went, um, didn't just work out for us to be there. So, yes. Um, so, like I said, we watched this in the cinema and there's something that um, big budget films do quite well, which is called atmosphere. Atmosphere is that there's an ambience around the character or the subjects within a frame. And it's called framing, basically, whereby you frame a subject and you put them in the context of a background which kind of ties into the subject itself. Okay, yeah. probably those are a lot of technical words, but what I'm saying is that think of a picture. When you see somebody standing and saying hello, imagine if they were standing in, at the back and uh, at the back of maybe like a shanty town or some, somewhere that is yeah. very undesirable. Fra what framing does is that you frame them in such a way whereby the subject kind of fits into that background and looks really gorgeous. Mm. Now, in this particular film, there was a lot of gorgeousness or a lot of beautiful locations which were not used appropriately in the way I felt that it yeah. should have been used. Um, yeah. Um, and I said that especially in a scene which was a yacht scene. So there was this scene whereby it was also sure that these guys, you know, that they have more That's money than they know what to do with. <laughs> exactly. And and they went on to this yacht. But when you went in, they, 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 they were sitting around the table that felt like a hut. 
and they were all huddled together and i was like okay this doesn't show up this shows poverty <laughs> so you might as well just start taking us to an expensive restaurant and shoot the same scene there um so there was an introduction of this caucasian character um and they were talking about marriage first off the bat not all caucasian people speak like aristocrats not everyone has a stiff upper lip um accent you know <laughs> Just stop it. <laughs> Get normal people that can talk. <laughs> um, and they were going on and on and on about marriage. And it, uh, it, it was tedious to watch. Um, Close-ups were, um, were really, really unflattering. You know, we watched this in the cinema. So if someone had a zit that was supposed to be this big on uh, TV, it was this big. <laughs> <laughs> so on the big screen, exactly. Yeah, 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 there's no point. Um, so the dialogue was tedious. Um, one of the things that really makes a film enjoyable to watch is to see two um, characters go back and forward and they have banter and you know it's the kind of things you know it's just like when you watch um one of my best films the gladiators and when uh maximilius reveals himself and he was like mm -hmm. ah, i'm the general i'm the father you know that dialogue sometimes you want to just be saying it in fact you want to just see somebody and say that ah, i am a d ah, the son of <laughs> and you know it makes you when, it makes when, you sit about pay attention. Yeah, actually. and when the dialogue is so flat that you are just like, what is wrong with these people? Please, carry go, <laughs> you know? Um, some of the panning. So panning is when you pan, when you take a camera from left to right. Um, and there was this um, dinner scene yeah, whereby you had a one. spread of, you know, exotic food and they wanted to show the luxury. And you were panning on the thing and we could barely even see what was on there. Yeah. Some, somebody forgot to put on the autofocus. So, you know, these are things that you need to pay attention to. And why I'm pointing it out is that even though that was short, it shouldn't have made it into the final cut. Yeah, exactly. You use something else. I will breathe. <laughs> <laughs> it's, your, it's your turn to breathe. <laughs> yes. We saw your comments. Yes, I'm breathing now. <laughs> okay, verdict. Verdict. Okay, let me first give my verdict for a qualifying thing. It's a nice to watch. The pain for me was after seeing one i so yeah. much wanted this film to be a, a must watch but um there were just too many things that sh seemed okay i don't know the facts of it but i feel this i feel this film was rushed mm. i feel there was enough in it to make it a very good film yeah and i think if they are taking a little bit more time to plan out what they wanted to do I, personally given the budget it takes to shoot in dubai i probably would have shot this in london I think it's cheaper to shoot, shoot in London. It's easier to shoot in London. Um, and I think they would have made a much better film if they had made it in London. I think they, Dubai is more exotic, don't get me wrong. It's probably more cinematic as well. Yeah. But I think it's also more difficult to shoot in it because they're a more close society. You can't just take cameras into any place, particularly where they're women. That's my guess. They might have different views. might have been easier for them to shoot. Maybe they had someone that lived there already. But I still think they could have made a better film if they shot in, Lake, in Nigeria or in London for the exotic yeah. scenes. And I think where they would have saved money and time, because you have more time, you could have made it an even better film. I just think certain things were rushed. Yep. Same here. Um, I, I think it was a nice to watch as well. Um, the, I totally agree with Kaya. They said there was a lot more that could have been done. Um, and... I think one of the things filmmakers need to under, needs to learn more is the power of suggestion. Um, if you don't have the money to shoot in exotic places, and I, I think that because some of the places that they were shooting in are some of the most expensive places in Dubai. Um, and Dubai, is, <laughs> you just go to, well, within the city of Dubai, there are just certain places that you go to and you, it smells of money. So exactly. you don't need to go and shoot in the most exactly. expensive exactly. place exactly. because they didn't even shoot in, well, they shot in going through the foyer. Yeah. But when they wanted to do a particular wedding scene, it was outside. And I can just think of the hotel manager saying that with how much money do you want to shoot in city? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, you want to rent the hall because exactly. you have to literally rent it as well. Uh, no, of course, it. you have to rent if you want to use it. So I'm just, I'm, uh, yeah, you know, why, why, you know? Exactly. But thanks for watching. Um, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Please head on over to nollywoodboulevard.com. Thank you for all your comments. All the guys on the um, comments boards on Facebook, we really enjoyed the banter and, mm -hmm. you know, the examples and uh, how we talk and everything. Yes, we, we understand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. We really, really appreciate it. You can also catch us on iTunes and on Facebook and Twitter. Um, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time on The Gist.
Today's movie is The Wedding Party Dubai Destination. No, Destination Dubai. <laughs> anyway, the wedding party.